Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly. Let's get right into how to use action events in Unity. So action events are really useful because they let you easily set up and respond to things happening in your game, like clicking a button or finishing a task without needing complicated code where we have a bunch of serialized fields so we need to make sure we drag and drop them all into the right place and it gets really messy. Well, this doesn't get messy. Let's get into how we do it. But I've got a quick setup here to demonstrate it. So I've got an input manager with a script and we're just gonna be checking if the W key is pressed. And what we want to do is when the W key is pressed, we want to update a score. So I've got a text mesh pro object and I've got a custom script called score update. And we have a reference to the text. We have a score variable. And every time we want to update the score, we increase it by a hundred and update the text. I also have a function to debug the score in the console to demonstrate subscribing multiple functions to an event. So when we create an event, we want to create it in the class that we want to actually invoke or broadcast the event. And to make one, we can do public static event action and then the name of your event. So make sure you have using system imported at the top of your code because that's how you use actions in Unity. And when naming your action, you should probably start it with the word on and then what's happening. So maybe you want an event for when you collect a coin. So then you would do on coin collected. In this case, we're going to do on W key pressed because when we call the action event, it's going to be when we hit the W key. And the event keyword here is really important. If we don't have it, that means any class in our program can broadcast the event. And by broadcast, I mean call the event or invoke it. Static means any class in our program can access this event without needing a reference to this class, which is really useful for subscribing. To actually call the event, we're going to do the name of your event, then the question mark, then dot invoke. So obviously this is us referencing the name of our event and the question mark means we're going to check if there's any Thing subscribed to the event. Basically, will there be anything? Because if there's nothing listening for your action event, there's no point in broadcasting or invoking it because nothing's going to respond to it. So that's what the question mark does. And then dot invoke means we're going to be broadcasting it. Let's hook this up now to our score update. So what we're going to do is we're going to do private void on enable, which occurs whenever you enable the object or before the start function. And we can do input checker, which is the name of the class where we create our action event. And then we can do dot on w key pressed, which is the name of our action event. And then we do plus equals update score. So now whenever this event is called, we're going to execute the update score function. Basically increase the score by a hundred. Then we're going to update the text. We're also going to do the same thing. So after update score occurs, the debug score is going to occur with input checker dot on w key pressed plus equals debug score. And debug score is going to occur after update score, even though they're both subscribed to the same event because debug score is subscribed a line after. However, there is one more thing you need to do. You need to do private void on disable and do exactly the same thing as before, but instead of plus equals, you need to do minus equals. So we need to unsubscribe from the event. Basically, if we do this, let's say we disable this game object or destroy this game object without unsubscribing. We're still going to be subscribed, but when we call the event, the functions that we have subscribed won't occur because technically they don't exist anymore because they're either disabled or destroyed and so you'll get an error. However, if we do this, it basically means when we disable or destroy this object, we unsubscribe from any event to prevent that from happening. And that's all you actually need to do for this tutorial. We have now hooked up our input checker and our score update using action events. So we save our work and you go into Unity. There's nothing we need to drag and drop about and we hit play. And if I press the W key, look, it goes up. And this is all because of action events. So this is a little example to show you how you can do it. This can be really powerful when you need to send a message to many objects in your game. So thanks for being a great audience.
Be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.